Brooke McCarty, we call her Little General. McCarty, way rolling in. She's got another one. Cross court to McCarty. Gets her defender going the other way. Count it. Brooke McCarty launches it. Got it. McCarty left wide open again. How do you leave one of the greatest three point shooters in school history wide open? She has the best assist to turnover ratio in Big 12 play, and Brooke McCarty now joins us on the set of Game Plan. Brooke, how would you say that process has gone from playing more off the ball to being the primary point guard this season for this team? Um, I think at the beginning it was very hectic for me. It was just kind of a learning experience all over again because last year I was kind of more off the ball two player and so this year kind of taking the role of the point guard. I didn't think it would be that hard but it actually has a lot <laughs> that comes with it and so I think it's been a process. So what's been the biggest challenge? Mm, I think the biggest challenge is probably being vocal, being more vocal, just letting my teammates hear me and knowing that I can take charge in the games and stuff like that. I think that's been the tough part. And why is that tough for you? Because it seems like when you watch you on court, you got this radiating personality, but then everything I hear about you is you're kind of quiet. So why, why <laughs> is that a, a dilemma or a challenge for you? Um, I don't really know. I think I'm more of a lead by example person, not very vocal. Like if you come to our practices and stuff, you'll mostly hear Ariel because she's our <laughs> <laughs> vocal player. But I think I just have to learn. Um, I'm not really that loud all the time. And even when I try to be loud, they still say they can't hear me. And so it's kind of just been a work in progress. Coach Aston has told me before, it's really tough to be her point guard. What have you seen in that way? Do you know what she's talking about? Yeah, most definitely. You just have to be like an extra coach on the floor. Like you have to basically be a version of her on the floor. And so you never know what's going through her mind because there's so many things going on up there. And so you just have to kind of feed off of her and hear her message and not the tone. And you just have to play through everything because she kind of blames her point guards for everything <laughs> that happens. And so you just have to have tough skin. You could say blames when things aren't going well. There's not a lot of that right now because this team is rolling 14 straight and you have such a critical part in this team and the momentum going forward. What would you say is happening, clicking right now in the midst of this 14-game winning streak? Honestly, I think our younger players are really coming into their roles and just accepting that it's a tough grind. And so I think that, of course, we have a lot of veterans, but um, – our play is kind of determined by our younger players too. And so I think everyone is just coming along and we're kind of taking it one day at a time and just kind of knowing that we have to stick in the moment. And so we've been really doing that and it's really been helping us. And coach says that team, says this team is doing that as well, staying in the moment. But how, how tough is that when you're young and you're hearing people pump up what you're doing right now, talking about the win streak, how tough is it to stay in that moment and just focus on the next practice, the next game? Um, I think for young players it would be really tough, but as veterans we kind of preach that staying in the moment is really what we need to do. And so no one really on our team really worries about what everybody else is saying. We're kind of stuck on us and just worrying about what we're doing. And so everything that's happening outside, it doesn't really affect what's happening, what we're doing. Coach Aston told me I need to talk to you about your sleeping habits. <laughs> what is it about sleep and you? It seems like that's a big part of your life. Uh, I don't really know. I'm just a big sleeper. Like, if I'm not at practice, not at school, I'm asleep. And they always say, like, I sleep so much, but it's just like, I don't know. I get so tired all the time. I don't really know what it is. Do you get is. grumpy when you don't get your sleep? Yeah, I think I would say that if I don't get a nap or something, I'm kind of a uh, little So you had, you had enough sleep coming into this interview? Yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> great. It's going fantastic. The one shock to my system is where's the bun? We, we don't see the bun present, and for those at home that don't know, Brooke's got a big following, but perhaps her hair bun has an even larger following. Check this out. Everybody loves Brooke. Brooke's a little adorable, curly-haired, fun person, so people want to know what she's doing all the time, so we thought it'd be a good idea to market her bun, and it's actually helped us market our games. We just thought it was a pretty fun and cool idea, so it's a movement. It's the bun movement. Brooke's bun account. I think a lot of people actually think that it's Brooke who is tweeting, but the thing is is that Brooke doesn't really like social media that much. I think she has like one social media account and she just likes to stay off of that. It just blew up, I swear. We started it one day and then the next day we posted a picture of her 
and the next day she had like 2,000 plus followers. We were just like, this is crazy. I can't believe people caught on so quickly to it, but I think a lot of people actually think it's her running it. It's not me. It is Brie, Kelsey, and Ariel, and they just made a Twitter of my hair, and I don't know, they just post pictures of the team on there, I guess, and stuff like that, and so it's just a fun Twitter, I guess. I am a publicist and a marketer for Brooks Bun. <laughs> uh, actually, we came up with the idea because we saw Diana Taurasi's Bun had a Twitter, and I just, I really thought Brooks Bun needed a Twitter. It's just, it's a great bun, right? So me, Bree, and Kelsey started Brooks Bun's Twitter, and we are the faces behind it. I'm kind of like the photographer, and uh, Ariel, she makes like the, po the statuses, or I guess you can say what she's up to and everything. Kelsey has her little input. And so we just have Brooke randomly send us pictures most of the time. And I think it's, it's great because it's a way for us to, uh, you know, try to e expand our fan base and, and reach out to because everyone loves Brooke. I don't know, it's, she's just, I guess, a lovable person. We mainly just tweet about like, whatever Brooke's doing, or like a motivational quote, like about her bun or something, or like a motivational quote about like never letting anybody dull your shine or something like that. I just feel like it's funny that <laughs> you actually made a Twitter account <laughs> for her bun, but it's fun. I mean, we're a fun team, so we think of things like that, and we just do things like that. So Brooke, how did this happen? How did your bun become such a big deal? I really don't know. Like, it was a joke at first. They were just joking, and then they actually made a Twitter, and so... It was just like, I don't know, it was just a fun joke that they wanted to do because Ariel thought that um, one of the WNBA basketball players has a bun Twitter, and so she was like, Diana we should Tarazi. make you one. Yeah. Wouldn't you say she's big time? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, so what's your reaction to know that her bun's Twitter account has 2,486 followers and yours has 3,581? Uh, I don't know. That's, that's crazy. That's big time. <laughs> Your bun is big time. Yeah, well, we'll see. Next time, do we get the bun? Definitely. Senior year yeah. appearance, we have the bun? Most definitely. There we go. Brooke, congratulations <laughs> on everything you. so far in your career. We look forward to a lot more. Thank you.